Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. This is another installment of the How To series. And today we'll zero in on heavy swirling. This is a common problem and uh, can be caused by a few factors soft and clear coat, repeatedly running through a tunnel car wash, which I highly recommend you stay away from, improper aftercare and wash technique. Today I'll show you how to remove them, and then it's up to you to stick by safe wash and aftercare routines and methods and never let this happen to the surface of your car truck or motorcycle. So I will divide this half of the hood into three sections so I can show you a few methods that are effective and will work. For the peak on body lines, if you don't have a ton of experience and you're just not quite sure, a little unsteady, tape them off. Uh, it'll give you a little bit of a safety net when you're polishing and cutting. And this is exactly what you do with pinstripe tape. Let's move on over to the table where we have the G360 for a clay cutting compound. You can use any cutting compound. It is meant to team up with the rotary and a wool pad. Sonex has a good cutting compound, 3D. The rotary has a Lake Country hybrid wool pad attached to it. I like to spread out the compounds with an application pad and then get to work after priming the wool pad. It's a lot less residue flying around and uh, just a cleaner job altogether applying this way. You'll see how I work edges and body lines and contours with the rotary here. Everything is under control. I'm not plowing or throwing the polisher around. Everything is measured. Every movement is measured when I'm polishing to ensure an even cut. The polisher is running between the third and fourth speed setting. You can hear the polisher in the video and it's not screaming, it's not on the highest speed possible. When it comes to pressure, I'm just guiding the polisher. Let the tool do the work. I have mentioned this before and I have to keep relaying the message. If you're worn out at the end of the day by using these tools, you're using them incorrectly. Let them do the work for you. A ton of pressure, high speed, it only spikes the temperatures and gets you into troubles on edges. Take your time, be careful, get a nice even cut. A quick demonstration using the only two arms that I have. I'll do the best I can here. Um, I want to show you that the temperature is only increased a few degrees when you use the rotary polisher. Uh, air really flows nice and smoothly through the fibers of that wool pad, keeping the temperature down compared to a microfiber pad, doing multiple passes to do the same work a rotary can, which spikes the temperatures beyond 20 degrees, the ambient temperature, the rest of the panel. And that causes a lot of stress on the clear coat. When I talk about temperature spiking, I always um, have those chime in. Hey, my car sits outside where it reaches 150, 160 degrees, uh, and it doesn't fail. Yeah, but the whole vehicle, the whole panel is uh, heated up and expanding in one uniform motion where if you're just working a small area on a panel, just that area will spike and the rest of the panel is room temperature and that causes the stress. Remember, primer base coat and clear coat are three different materials and will expand in different ways when heated. Time to move on and remove the haze from the cutting process. The wool pad will cause a little bit of hazing and cloudiness and clear that up with a finishing pad and a finishing polish. 
any will do. It doesn't matter what you use. When it comes to finishing polishes, it's hard to find one that uh, will not get the job done. It's the cutting compounds where there are just a few that I rely on. And just to show you, even when finishing, the polisher is set between the third and the fourth, leaning more towards the fourth speed setting. Um, the polisher is always under control. The pattern is nice and even, a crisscross pattern, which ensures me a nice even finish. I still see videos out there with the polisher being thrown all about in all different directions at high rates of speed. Guys, give the polisher a chance, the polisher, the pad, and the compound a chance to do its job. Uh, one inch every second or two is slow enough that will give the tools the appropriate time to do the job, yet not slow enough where it spikes temperatures. Keep the polisher moving, but do it at a nice, steady pace. Two quick and easy steps just shown here on this video will give you improvements. Now, there are scratches that are beyond the two steps that we just completed here, and those are going to be too deep to chase after, not worth taking the clear coat that thin. But a huge and marked improvement, and the customer will be elated. And now that gorgeous base coat, including its metallic flake, is really coming through. Let's move on to the next section, and we're going to try something just a little bit different. For those not comfortable with wet sanding or using the rotary polisher, grab a microfiber cutting pad for your DA, and 3D ACA 500 or AAT, or even Sonax has great compounds to team up with your microfiber pad. Keep the polisher moving. This uh, method will rise temperatures just a little bit more than the rotary or wet sanding, so we do want to keep that in mind. A lot of new polishers still come out with a 6-inch backing plate. Some are starting to come out with a 5-inch. But if yours does have a 6-inch, I recommend ordering a 5-inch backing plate and 5-inch or 5.5-inch pads. More energy will be transferred from the polisher to the pad, getting work done more efficiently. And you can then fit into tighter spaces as well. And after removing the residue, I'll bring you in close, and you'll see there is a nice difference. The microfiber pad did a decent job, but it can take multiple passes. And in between those passes, I would let the surface cool down nicely. It will never be efficient compared to a wool pad attached to a rotary. No matter what you've heard out there, that combination will always do circles around a microfiber pad on a DA. Only second to wet sanding when it comes to the effectiveness of cutting and getting the job done quickly without spiking temperatures. Not trying to be confrontational with that statement. I just don't deal with theory BS. Uh, after thousands of corrections, I can only share the experiences 
um, that I have gone through when it comes to paint correction on single stage and clear. Take it for what it is. Okay, so after a few passes and then follow up with a finish, finishing polish and pad, that will also be needed with a microfiber pad and a cutting compound. We now have a good portion of the hood finished. Those are two effective ways, but we still have one more section left where I can show you what to use. And finally, for those that just offer enhancements or one steps for now, uh, your fiber pad teamed up with uh, 3D1 or flawless cut, well, any one step pad actually, uh, will make a huge difference. Customer expectations combined with a little bit of common sense, and you can make huge steps of improvement even on surfaces this bad. The shop manager there may not be all that impressed with me, but let's finish off this section of the hood with that combination I just showed you, and we'll see the results. Now you do need to expect to make multiple passes with this combination and team, but it can be effective. Just leave the surface cool properly between passes and you'll be fine. Any one of the combinations shown in the video today will give you these results, and then all you have to do afterwards is stand back and enjoy them. That will do it for today's video. That does it for another how-to. Many more to come as I am trying to put a library together for you, and you have reference to come back to when you come across each situation. Have a good one, guys.